good morning dear students today we will start with the new chapter that is advanced web design we are discussing some important concepts of this chapter in 11 standard so we will revise some important points of the same chapter itself the first point is website website is a collection of interlinked web pages as we know that a single website contains number of web pages those were interlinked now the next point is web page web page is also referred as a html document or i can say that it is a single web page of a website so web page is a part of website through which contents are visualized to the user now the next is browser browser is a program or application used to view the contents of web pages so i can say that it is a specialized program through which we can access different websites as well as we can operate number of operations using the specified website some few examples of browsers are internet explorer google chrome mozilla firefox opera safari etc now the next is editor editor is nothing but it is a program which allows you to type the code of the web page in short if you want to design any website or web page you must write the code for the same so with html language we can write the code for the said web page or website so the next is extension extension of html document is either html or html as we know that we use as notepad as editor for the html language and the default extension of notepad editor is .txt that is text document if you want to treat that particular page or a file as a html document you must save the specified code with the extension referred as .html or .stm now we should learn about the concept of HTML language that is HTML stands for Hyper Text Markup Language. Thing is that it is not a case sensitive language. Means what? As HTML is a standard web designing language, but it is not case sensitive. That is, you can write the code of the HTML language in upper case as well as in lower case. So there are two web pages. One is static web page as well as dynamic web page created with the help of the language web based languages so what is the meaning of static interactive web page so it is the web page which cannot be updated in future means once you construct a web page it is finalized hence forward if you want to change any content of the said web page it is not possible using static interactive web page concept then what is the solution for this so the solution is to create the dynamic web pages dynamic web page can be updated in future now the most important point of the html language is tag so what is the meaning of tag so html tags are keywords enclosed in angular brackets or i, I can also say that these are the commands provided by the html language basically tags are written inside the angular bracket now next is types of tag there are two types of tags in html that is container tag and empty tag container tag is also called as a pair tag so what is my pair pair means what two collection of two that is it has a beginning as well as end tag for example body and slash body if you go through this particular text you can observe that this is the text enclosed in a angular brackets and it has a beginning tag as well as it has a end tag the difference is that end tag represents a special character referred as a forward slash so the pair of this body and slash body these are the two tags are referred as a container tags or i can say that it is a pair tag now the second is empty tag it is also called as a unpaired or a singular tag means what it has only beginning tag it doesn't contain the concept of end tag examples are here br and hr next point is attribute so each and every tag has its own attributes so what is meaning of attribute an attribute defines a property for an element that is it it is used to change the default behavior of a tag now for example let's 
take a look of the busy color attribute we discuss in the 11th standard that is busy color is the attribute of body type now you know that busy color stands for background color and as far as the knowledge is concerned the default background color of the web page is busy color that is white now if you want to change that white background color to any another color then you must specify the busy color attribute of the body tag in the code so here the example has given to you that is body busy color is equal to red means what you want to set red as a background color to the web page which is not a default one the thing is that attribute is nothing but the additional property supplied to a tag to change its default behavior fine this is all about the concept of tag and its types now moving forward further the concept is structure of html so how in which format you are supposed to write the html code so as we know that html code is written inside the editor that is notepad now here the first tag is html second is head third is title and slash title now title is the sub tag of head and slash that is is it, it is a sub tag of head tag now next comes the body tag so the main code of the web page is enclosed within the body section near about 98% or 99% tags are the sub tags of body tag because they encloses within the body section and the last one that is the slash statement that means you want to end your code over here this is the structure of html language now in our syllabus html file language that is extension of html language is, uh, is was introduced uh, sorry then here the first tag is less than explanatory mark doc type html that it indicates that it is a document type declaration and browser should understand this particular code is of html5 so here itself this html tag head tag title as well as title title then slash head body code of the web page then slash body and slash html now moving further the concept of form in html file language so we have already discussed the forms some basic concepts of the form in the 11th standard we will revise that so form is a method to accept the values from the user so i can say that form in html is used to accept user inputs it is created by using the form tag and as we know that it is a pair tag that means it contains beginning as well as end tag some attributes of form tag are first name action and method so name is the first attribute of the form tag specifies the name of the form that means if you want to identify that form it should be identified by using a name attribute so it is user defined user can assign any value to this name attribute now second is action action specifies the path or location where the form is to be submitted means what once once user enters the value in the form elements and after that when you click on the submit button so which means file or where that particular info should be uh, submitted that should be decided that is decided by the action attribute and third and most important is method so method are of two types that is one is get and second is post the default method is get now for what purpose get is used and for what purpose post is used so get is used better for the data which is not sensitive means if don't you don't want to secure your data you can use the get method if you want to secure the data then the method should be post means it is secure method to submit sensitive or personal information now moving further every form has its controls or elements through which data is accepted so what is the meaning of that so elements or controls of a form can be placed by using input tag now input tag is a sub tag of form tag and it is used to specify the different types of controls or element of a form it also has some attributes named as type name max length size checked and value now one 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 by one we will discuss in detail these attributes the first is type so type it describes the name of the control or an element of a form the possible values are as we know that there are seven basic elements of controls of form named as text box password 
check box radio button submit and reset so these are the possible values of the type attribute of input tag that means if you want to introduce a text box within a form you can use type is equal to text as a value if you want to introduce password element on a web page you can use type is equal to password and so on now the next attribute is name so as already states that name is uh, everywhere that means if you want to identify an element you must assign some specific name or some unique name to the control so it is just the name given to the control or an element of a form so it is also user defined name user can assign according to its own idea or own logic itself now the next is max length so max length is used to use with the text box and password control or element for specify uh, specifying that maximum number of character which can be entered in the said element that is if you want to enter only 20 characters in a text box only 20 not more than that then you can use the max length property is equal to 20 for the text box as well as for the password next attribute is size fourth one it specifies the width of the text box that means it is fired with text box as well as password and the next is value so it is used, used to assign the default value of the text box or password as well as label of checkbox and radio button and the last is checked so it is standalone attribute it specifies the default selection for options in a checkbox or a radio button if you want to uh, display the selected option that means by default option on the web page you can use checked value or checked attribute within the input tag these are the some uh, i can say that attributes of an input tag by using this you can control your own web page now apart from these particular seven elements that is already i discussed that is text box password checkbox radio button submit and reset so apart from these particular seven elements there are two additional one that is text area tag and select tag now text area itself has a tag so it doesn't need the help of the input tag because we already discussed that text box password checkbox radio submit reset these elements can be introduced by using the input tag there is no need to introduce that particular text area tag by using input tag that's why it is a separate one it has its own tag that is text area tag so it is used to create a text box with a multi line multiple line sorry text entry so what is the meaning of this so text area once you compare the text area with the text box you can clearly identify that text box allows only single line text entry just like notepad and text area allows to enter multi line text entry means what you can enter multiple lines by using the text area control or element and it is a container tag that means it has a beginning as well as end tag now few attributes of the text area tag are name rows calls max length placeholder and required so one by one we will discuss this name as already stated just stated that name is for every uh, assign uh, name is used to assign for every control of the element next is rows it specifies the number of lines in a text area means how much horizontal lines you want to introduce because it allows multi line text entry so that multi line concept goes through the rows attribute and the third is calls it specifies the width of the text area means how much words or how much character you want to visualize virtually uh, i can say that in column uh, format so you can assign that particular uh, value as a calls attribute then max length so max length allows you to control the maximum number of characters in a text area next is placeholder so what is meaning of placeholder this is the new concept placeholder it specifies the short hint that describes the expect, expected value of a text area means what you are supposed to enter in the given provided space that is multi line text box so that text should be enclosed within the placeholder attribute of text area tag and the last and most important is required that is sixth attribute required it specifies that text area must be filled out means you cannot 
be kept as a null if required is present in the text area. It is a stand alone attribute. So what is the of stand alone attribute? We, we the attribute which doesn't take any kind of value, just like checked up. Hmm? And here it's it is a required. Fine. This is about the concept of multi-line text box entry. Now the last element of a form is select tag. So select tag specifies that if you want to display a list of items by using a drop down list concept that is it, it is used to create a drop down list it is a container tag that means it has a beginning as well as end tag it also has some follow uh, the attributes so that is name multiple and size so what is meaning of name so it assigns the name to the control second multiple it allows user to select more than one value means what suppose any user want to select more than two values of the drop down list then it can be selected by using the multiple attribute it is also a stand alone attribute absence of this attribute can allow only one selection and if it is present in the select tag you can select multiple options by pressing a control key third is size it specifies the number of visible values means how much values should be visible when user clicks on the drop down arrow of the list itself that can be specified by using the size attribute so this select tag contains one sub tag referred as option tag as we know that it allows you to create a drop down list so the list items can be highlighted by using the option tag so it is sub tag of select tag it defines the list item in a list box some attributes of the option tag are one well, first is selected that means if you want to set as a default list item of a drop down list box then you can type selected as a standalone attribute inside the option tag itself and then second is value so it specifies the position of the list item in a list means you can change the sequence of the list item by using the value attribute of the option tag so this is all about the concept of form tag and hence forward we will discuss all these particular elements or contours of a form by using one example given below